All right, so now we're moving on to our next unit, which is unit 6B, and we're going to learn how to draw our data three different ways. So we're going to learn how to draw a histogram, which you're going to see it's very close to something you've learned before, um, the bar graph, but there's one huge difference between them. You're going to learn how to draw a stem and leaf plot, and then you're also going to learn how to draw a box plot. This one may be the hardest of the three. Um, however, if you think finding a median is easy, then a box plot is going to be easy. None of them are really that difficult. It's just you have to practice these and you're gonna to have to remember how to do these so that way you can show me in an assessment when we get back to school. All right, so what you need to be able to know how to do by the end of this video is know how to draw a histogram, know how to draw a stem and leaf graph, and know how to draw a box plot. All right, um, all we're going to do in this video is go through how to do one of each uh, and then you guys will get an opportunity to practice it. So it's really, really, really important that you're writing down the steps on how to do a histogram, writing down the steps on how to do a stem and leaf graph, so that way at any point you can always refer back to your notes. All right, so what is a histogram? Well, a histogram is a bar graph that shows the frequencies of data of data values and in intervals of the same size. So when we say of intervals, you see here it says number of laps. We're not just doing one, two, three. Intervals means that we're looking uh, between certain numbers. So in this case, our interval is between one and three. And then our next interval is the same size between four and six. So you see in both of these cases, we're including three different data values within the one interval. We have one, two, and three for this one, four, five, and six for this one, seven, eight, and nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13, 14, 15. So it gives us a range of numbers that we can then say, okay, what, what is going on or how many do we have that occur in this range? Because if we had people who swam 15 different laps, we don't want to have to draw 15 different bar graphs to represent that. We want to try and um, put our data into these intervals so that way we can kind of look at it a little bit better than looking at all of our data completely spread out. All right? And then the height of the bar represents the frequency. So it's how many did this value occur? All right? So now let's go ahead and go through what the steps are of how to make a histogram, and then we'll make one. All right, so these are the four steps that you're going to have to do when creating a histogram. The first one is you're going to have to create a frequency table. And let me just show you. So a frequency table is this here. So you're going to always have to make a table when you're going through this, all right? And it's called a frequency table. And what you do is you fill in your intervals. And for now, I will always give you your intervals. And then you will fill in their frequency, all right? So you see here we have the number of laps. This is our interval on the left-hand side. And then here, each of our intervals, we filled in their frequency. So you will always, 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 always have to create this. That is step one. Step two, you will draw and label an axis to represent your interval frequency. So here we could have an x or an axis, like you would think of it as x and y. Well, we will label our intervals at the bottom. And then here we will label our frequency on the side, like our y. And then we will draw a bar to represent the frequency of each interval. So we're gonna go through this, we will draw these bars to represent what the um, interval is for each one, what the frequency is. And there should be no gaps between the bars. This is where it's different than a bar graph. When you drew your bar graphs in the past, you always left a space in between because when we do a bar graph, they're called discrete numbers, meaning um, like it's one, two, three, not anything in between it. Um, so we will use discrete numbers. Now when we use intervals, uh, we're using continuous, which means that um, the numbers can be decimals or they, they can go up into this next value. Uh, so there's no gaps in between unless a bar or a frequency has zero. So let's say if there's a space there, that meant it's because it had a frequency of zero. All right, this might be confusing for right now, but what you have to do is you must write down these steps to drawing an a histogram. Draw, write those down, all right? And then we're gonna go ahead and do a problem with it. And anytime that you get stuck while doing a problem, all you have to do is go back to these steps and it'll help you out. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is actually draw a histogram. So I put the steps here so that way we can go through step by step and what we're doing. And this way, if you ever get stuck, you can also use this part of the video to say, okay, how do I use these steps to create um, my histogram? So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to create a frequency table. And I already drew one over here for you, but you will have to draw this yourself. So depending on however many intervals we have, which here, if you count, we have one, two, three, four different intervals. So I must have at least four rows, and then my top row needs to be explaining my data. So you see here, we're looking at the number of siblings that we have. So that's why my intervals are part of the number of siblings, because we can have zero siblings, one sibling, or all the way up to seven, according to this data. All right? Then 
the frequency will get its own column uh, next to it. And the frequency, this means how many times does that occur? How many data do we have in these intervals? So after you draw this, which this is always going to be provided for you for the time being, um, and then after you draw this and label this, all we're going to go through now is we're going to go through and literally count each one and put them in its respective table. So between zero and one, uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six frequency between zero and one. See, I'm just counting them and crossing them out. Now the next one, between two and three, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I have nine here. Then between four and five, I have one, two, three. So I have three. And then I will do one more. Let's go ahead and pick the color. Let's pick gold. Uh, between six and seven, I have one and two. All right, so by crossing these out, I'm able to go ahead and identify um, that I've counted them all. And if I didn't miss any, I can go ahead and add them in later on. But all I did was just go through and count how many I have for each interval. All right, and then we did that. So let's go ahead and cross that one out. The next one says draw and label an axis to represent your intervals and frequencies. So pretty much what we're doing here is we're drawing an X and Y axis. We don't need to create our four quadrants like we learned earlier in the year. We just need to just go ahead and create this like one quadrant here where they just touch at the one point. On the left hand side will be our frequency. So that is our Y axis, what we're used to. And our bottom, our X axis is going to be whatever our data is. So in this case, it's number of siblings. So make sure that you are accurately labeling this. All right. And then now, now unlike with our X axis, we're not going to the label one, two, three, four, like what you would have done with your bar graph as well. What we're actually going to do here is we're going to label our intervals. So we have our intervals. I'll put these in blue since they're blue already. We have our intervals of 0 to 1. We have our intervals of 2 to 3. We have our intervals of 4 to 5. And then we have our interval of 6 to 7. So let me just go ahead and extend this just a little bit more. So that's labeling our intervals. So when I draw my bar graphs, I'm going to be drawing them directly above those intervals. All right. Then the next one that we have here is our frequency. So I see I'm going from two to nine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and count by two. So this will be two, this will be four, six, eight, ten. All right? You could have counted them in any way that you want, just as long as if you're consistent. I couldn't do two, three, six, and nine as my numbers I'm doing along here because they're not consistent. So we just need to be going along uh, the exact same amount every time. All right, so now after we go ahead and label our axis, we just need to go ahead and draw on our graphs. So from 0 to 1, we know it's 6. So here I know that from where it's 0 to 1, it's going to be 6. Now when you're drawing these, just make sure that you are cutting the distance like halfway in between the intervals so that that way it will allow for your bar graphs to stay the same width. Um, if you're using one color to do this, I would suggest shading one and then not shading the other or the best part of doing this, or the best way, is, is to use two different colors. So that way you can represent the bar graphs next to each other so you can see them nice and clear. All right? Between the interval of 2 to 3, we're going up to 9. So from here, that will be halfway in between 8 and 10, which would be about right there. And I'm drawing my interval. Remember, I'm going to try to make sure it's going halfway in between um, my intervals I have here. So that way my graphs are staying the same width. So I'll color this one in. Okay, then the next one, 4 to 5, is at 3. So 3 is here. So I'll go ahead and draw my next bar graph there, color that one in. And then my last one was two, which will be down here. And there is my last graph. All right, you see here, unlike the bar graphs that you may have drawn before, there's no spaces in between. And we're not counting by ones on our x-axis like you might be used to. We're actually just writing our intervals out um, there as well. So that way we can go ahead and graph these. Our bars must always be touching unless we have a frequency of zero. All right, so that is drawing a histogram. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about are the stem and leaf plots, or is the stem and leaf plots. And what a stem and leaf plot does is it allows for us to take digits, let's just say 34, 28, and 5, and it allows for us to visually represent these. Because when we get a whole bunch of data sets, there's so many datas all over the place that when we look at it, we can't. it, it can be confusing. Um, when it's all spaced out or when it's all written as individual numbers. So what a stem and leaf does is it allows for us to look at our values together as a group. 
So if you see here, we have a two and a zero, two and a zero, two and a one, two and a two. So all these actually represent individual numbers. So this two and this zero, if you see that it means 20. So that means this value actually means 20. When we have another zero, that means that we had another 20 next to it. When we had a one, that means that we had a 21 because our stem was two and our leaf was one. When we have a two here, stem two and a leaf two, that means we have 22. So all of these digits actually represent all these numbers, 20, 21, 22, 25, 27, and so on. So you see a, a, it's a much more concise to look at it in this than if we were to go ahead and list out all these data. And when we have a histogram or when we have a stem and leaf, we can look at what's called the distribution of the data, and we're going to talk about this in the future. But we can say if something is skewed, skewed to the right, skewed to the left. We can say if it's normal. And looking at the way that these numbers are written allow for us to visually see, well, where are the majority of our numbers at? So if you look at here, you see we have all of these uh, digits for 20. We have three for 30, and then only three between 40 and 50. That means most of our data is going to be in the 20s or 30s. So it allows for us to quickly and easily identify uh, some characteristics of the data that we have if we're trying to do a study. All right. So a stem and leaf is broken up into two different things. It's broken up into a stem and it's broken up into a leaf. For us, our leaf is always just going to be our ones digit for right now. So in this case, the four is our, is our leaf, our eight is our leaf, and the five will be our leaf as well. All right, so our ones digit for us right now is always going to be the leaf. When you guys learn this in the future in statistics or other classes, depending on the problem, uh, you could have your tens and your ones be your leaf. It just depends. But for us, we're just going to keep it very simple since we're just learning. Your ones will always be your leaf. All right, and then your tens or a combination of your tens and your hundreds for us right now is always going to be our stem. All right, so this will be our stem. Now for this one, when we have just five, what would our stem be? Well, let's think about that for a second. Our tens is a zero. So our stem would actually be zero, right? So these values, these digits will be written like this when we are going to do this in the future, in a moment, right? Where our stem is the first number that we're writing and then our leaf is going to be our second. And we can look at this as three, four means 34, two, eight means 28 and zero, five means five. So what does this number represent then? That would be 42, all right? So that is about the stem and leaf. Now we're gonna go ahead and plot one. You'll see this one is really not that hard to plot, but let's go ahead and do it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and draw a stem and leaf plot. Now, I've listed the instructions on how to draw it here, so please make sure you are writing those down. Uh, but I think this one is just a lot easier to explain it while we're doing it. So. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to create what's called a stem and leaf axis. And you're going to hear me call it a T chart because uh, you see over here that creates like a T. So we would create this little lowercase T and then in one side, we will always write our stem and then the other side, whoops, we will always write leaf. Then after we do that, we can then move on and we will create a header. So the header is just what is our data about? Our data here says our hair length. So it means I'm going to go ahead and write hair lengths. We can write this at the top. We can write this at the bottom. But whatever our data is about, we just need to make sure that we're also um, labeling our chart. Right? Then from here, we are going to plot each number in their stem or leaf section. Now, the most imp or the very important thing is we must go in order from least to greatest. So although five is going to be in the same section as one because that will still be zero five and zero one. They must be in order. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start this finding all of my going in order. So I have one. So that means my stem for one, if I'm going to plot one, my stem would be zero. And then I will have one, one, and one. So I have three ones after. All right. Then the next numbers I have are two. So I have one, two twos. So it'll be one, two. Um, I don't have any threes. I have one four, so I will write four. And then I have five, so I have two fives. I will write five. So I'll write two fives. Uh, and then the next one I have is seven. So I'll write seven. All right, so all I did was just go through my data, go in order from least to greatest, and I'm just plotting the points. 
Now, the hardest part for this is remembering that our ones have a stem of zero. All right, then the next one I'm going to do is I'm moving on to my next value, which will be the tens. Even if I don't have any tens, I still need to make sure I'm listing my stem there. My leaf will just be blank. So now I'm gonna go through and look at my tens. Well, I have a 12. That's the only one I have. So that means it will just be a two there. Okay, that was nice and easy. The next stem I know would be 20. Even if I don't have any, I must write it. So I have a 20, so I will put two zero. I have 27, I have 23. So that means 23 will go next, and then 27 will go next. All right, then our next value that we have is going to be 30. So I'll put my three. So then I have 30 and I have 32. So I have 30, I have 32, I have 33, and then I have 38. All right, so remember, our leaf are a one, so that's why when I write this stem of a three and I'm looking, this three zero means 30. This three two means 32. That means 33 and 38. Okay, then the last one that we have is, let me go ahead and pick a different color. Let's do uh, green. All right, our last ones that we have is our 40. Oh, wait, we already did green. Um, let's go ahead and do uh, orange. All right, our last ones that we have is 40. So we look, we have 40. So it'll be four zero, we have 44 and we have 47. So it'll be four and it will be seven. I'm just going to extend this a little bit more just to make sure it covers it all. All right, so now we plot each one in their section for their stem and leaf. And then the last thing you have to do is you must create a key. So pick any number. I'm just gonna pick this 12 because it's one by itself. And I will write key and then one, two, and then it is equals two, 12. So that way anyone that's reading this can understand, okay, so this first number is our tens, the second one's our ones, and then we're writing our key here. You could have picked any number you wanted. Instead of 12, you could, could have picked 23, and you could have went ahead and did 2, 3 is equal to 23. All right, so that is our stem and leaf. There's one more, and then we're done with this video. I'm just going to stop here with this video, um, and you will have another video that you're going to have to watch. Um, even though we're not going to have class on Wednesday, uh, you will have a video that you'll have to watch and have some stuff that you'll have to do uh, by the time that we get back to school. Um, all right, so that will give you Wednesday and that will give you Thursday to complete it as well. All right, so that is it for this video.